you know, these states people, they have proper charisma. Yeah, some of them do. Some of them don't. Some of them really don't. But the ones that do, it's like, oh, wow. You get it, like rock stars. Yeah. Like Taylor Swift. Tony Blair's like Taylor Swift. Yeah, I feel like Bill Clinton and Tony Blair sniffed each other the way two golden doodles know that they're both talking <laughs> to golden doodles. You know what I mean? Like, they like know that they're not just dogs, but even more the same. <laughs> Help us welcome to the stage the incredible Mini Driver. Thank you for being here. Hi. Thank you so much. It's so nice of you to, to join us. Recently, yes. you were on the Jennifer Hudson show mm. and shared the advice you would give your 25-year-old self after getting dumped by Matt Damon. Mm. What did I say? Uh, I don't what she would tell her 25-year-old self after Matt Oh, Christ, what did I say? It was under duress. Look, I look like a hostage. <laughs> You look stunning. Honestly, you look fantastic. It takes a lot of people and a ton of makeup to look that good. Now, but what did I tell myself? I don't know. You I don't remember. You joke. This was the, like, the, like, I'm, what did I tell myself? Um, oh, I think I said what my father said to me, which is essentially, maybe I didn't say this, but this is what I would, I should have said. Um, don't worry about it because it will happen again. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, the best thing I can tell you is that you will feel this way about somebody else. And I remember thinking it was so cruel, but it was absolutely true. And it's very good advice. But that's not what I said on the Jennifer Hudson show. I'm so sorry. I can't remember what it was. Sorry. Well, it's better to have the good advice then. Don't you think? Yeah, I'm glad we got the good advice. You got the good advice. J um, Jennifer got... I, I'm sure it was something nice because it's, she's so nice and it's a, very ni it's a really nice show. I think it was probably something comforting. Like well, that's nice. Right. Yeah. Olivia yeah. Rodrigo has that song, Driver License, Driver's License. Do you think, yes. And it's about sort of a breakup, mm -hmm. but it's like a high school breakup. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, this doesn't matter. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you, I know it feels like big emotions, but you're in high school. Don't worry about it. That's Who that, cares? That's, that's exactly it. It'll be fine. Like, imagine if like you actually, you know, it's like, it's a high school guy. He sucks. He's a little dum-dum. <laughs> You, 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 this is not the love of your life. No, it, it, exactly. But you can't you you can't hear that when you're when you're a teenager. And by the way, that's also the venerable Taylor Swift's you know entire canon up until a certain point is she makes a good point that she was on the bleachers, whatever it was. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, something about the bleachers. Something about the bleachers. Someone's on the bleachers. Someone's something Someone's that rhymes with bleachers. What rhymes with bleachers? She's on the features. Teachers. Does any, I don't. Key, teachers. Key beacher, beaches. She's features. on the bleachers. I'm wearing I'm hats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> now, are there any good songs about having absolutely zero romantic experience in high school? <laughs> because that's the song you really need. That's a, that, that's a song I think a lot of kids need to hear. What, like, what rhymes like, with I'm not getting any? Like, right, like Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo <laughs> sings a song about having a breakup. What about all the kids are like, oh, so you're just true. bragging about having had a boyfriend. It's so, it's so true. Actually, that's really true. It's like the way that when, when, you know, when people say that they've, been reincarnated and that they remember their past lives and like that all was like a high priestess and it's like well somebody had to be the serving person like it was like yeah. I, I want to hear can't, that everyone story. can't have been Joan of Arc no of course they weren't like you were the person cleaning up after the pharaoh's family had left three weeks later like, right right I mean you particularly no for sure <laughs> for sure your new movie yes Uproar. Mm. I'll explain the movie to you because it's so... Um, I didn't know enough about this. I mean, I was very young. You probably weren't even born when this was happening. 1981, when were you born? I was born in 1982. So the year before you were born, <laughs> everyone was really, really against what was happening in South Africa. And the world... I love that I'm telling all of you this, but like, because I'm sure lots of you remember this. But... Um, the South African rugby tour was not welcome anywhere in the world, but New Zealand welcomed them. And um, it's the national game of, of New Zealand. And there were huge riots because the Maori people and lots of white New Zealanders felt that they should stand with um, the black South Africans. 
um, and show so solidarity. And there were huge protests and really violent for a very, very peaceful country. And the, this is the backdrop of this film of a boy who is a Maori boy with a white mother and his brother who are sort of trying to find their way in this complicated moment. And it is really funny and really beautiful and um, somehow manages to educate without proselytizing. That is very hard to say with aligners in. I'm not going to lie. Um, it, it, isn't, it isn't pompous or self-righteous. It is beautiful and it teaches whilst also making you laugh and making you feel. And I, I really encourage you to go and see it. I'll go see it. You also have a podcast. I do. Mini questions with yeah. Mini Driver. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite guest? You haven't been on yet. That's what my follow-up question was. Yay. That was my follow-up question. Tell you, I tell you what, it was quite... Tony Blair came on my podcast. <gasps> and um, i got to tell you, like, that dude is charismatic. Yeah. Like, honestly, like, no matter what you think about Iraq, <laughs> that man is charismatic and amazing and brilliant. And I felt like I learned. I felt like I got... Um, you know, these states people, they have proper charisma. Yeah, some of them do. Some of them don't. Some of them really don't. But the ones that do, it's like, oh, wow. You get it, like rock stars. Yeah. Like Taylor Swift. Tony Blair's like Taylor Swift. Yeah, I feel like Bill Clinton and Tony Blair sniffed each other the way two golden doodles know that they're both talking <laughs> to golden doodles. You know what I mean? Like, they like know that they're not just dogs, but even more the same. <laughs> <laughs> you are sublime. No, you are. I think that's right. No, you. Now, on your podcast, Mini Questions with Mini Driver, you ask all of your guests the same set of questions which you derive from a famous series of interview questions developed by the French writer Marcel Proust. This is America. So the following queries were developed by my staff on their iPhones while walking my dog. <laughs> are you ready for oh, Mini and Maxi Questions with Mini Driver? Oh, boy. Okay, there you are. The oh, Riddle. God. You're the Riddler. Oh, my God. I'm the... Oh my God, I that's, that's awful. Fun. Why am I like that? Why, who did that to me? Yeah, who did that? Who did that to Mini Driver? Was it Zuri? By uh, the way, it's very current. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me to right. do it First question. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. happens when you die? Oh, God. Uh, um, 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 some lights out. Okay. Do you ever feel like maybe you're wiping wrong and then maybe you've been wiping wrong your, this whole time, but it's too late to ask anyone, so you just have to do what you can do and hope for the best? No. Yeah, me neither. What a stupid question. What happens when I die? Um, you're going to get reincarnated <laughs> Hell yeah. as a cupcake. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done on a date? Uh, climbed out a window. <gasps> mm. Wow. Yeah. From... Inside to outside or outside to inside? No, from the restaurant, I went... It, I mean, it's, it's embarrassing slash awful. Um, he, was, he was a terrible person, and that by... After we'd finished sharing an avocado, um, it was England in the 90s, you know, like, <laughs> ah, that was an appetizer. Half an avocado with a bit of balsamic vinegar. It was very au courant then. Ugh. I digress. That was that this was guy, that was the best. That was what England was doing in the nineties. It took a minute Jesus. for us to to get up to speed with the whole cuisine thing. Yeah, I digress. This guy revealed himself to be not only a bigot but so monumentally boring. He wasn't even interesting in his awfulness. He was just boring, and um, he was really good looking, which is how I'd been suckered in in the first place. So I did. I, I, I just, I skipped down through the window. But a girl did catch me, which is why I was thinking it was embarrassing. And she was like, are you just going to leave him? And I was like, yes. Do you really have to rinse off your recycling before you put it in the recycling bin? Or as you call it across the pond? In England. Crisps. <laughs> oh my God. Do you have to rinse me. it? Yes. Ugh. And also dry it. No. Yes. The recycling? Yes. Nobody's doing that. It's all going to one hole. But by, by the way, well, we all know that's true, but still in England, the national psychology is that you rinse it, you dry it, and then you put it in the recycling with the best hopes that they will, you know, someone will sit there sorting it through and sending it off to become yoga mats. <laughs> that's what I think, anyway. Pasta, bread, potatoes, rice. You can only keep three of the four. Which one are you getting rid of? Pasta, bread, potatoes, rice. I'm getting rid of rice. 
Yeah, I think that's... Mm, ooh. I, ooh, controversial. Ooh. ooh. Don't get me started. I can live without rice. I really can. Oh, potatoes, no. Bread, no. Rice doesn't mop it all up well enough. No, I think that's an important point that not enough people are making. <laughs> Made it here first. If a werewolf bit a zombie, would the zombie become a werewolf? Would the werewolf become a zombie or both? Both. Both. I would watch that movie. <laughs> By the way, we're in the right town. I think we might have just written a film. Zombie werewolf. Werewolf zombie. Yeah. Nobody tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's our idea. That's our idea. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> I do. No, I do. I do, because it's one of the questions that I ask on my podcast that I very much like. And someone said today, maybe my favorite answer to it ever. So the question is, what question would you most like answered? And people, it's hard to say generally, but people give very interesting answers about lots of different things, about what happens when you die and about aliens and about... Um, some geopolitical stuff and this person today on my podcast said um, I want to know if anyone actually really enjoys reverse cowgirl <laughs> and I was so I, it, it made me laugh so hard but there's this dead silence and I said to the producers afterwards like you better keep all that dead air in because it's so funny <laughs> I'm just, I was sort of so, like, British, like, woo, goodness, woo, woo, like, my, my British, my British mechanics literally blew a gasket inside my head, and I couldn't speak, and then I laughed and was like, well, answers on a postcard, please, like, I would really, I'm hoping people will write in someone who does enjoy it. What's crazy is that was also my question <laughs> because I actually want to know if it is fun to ride a horse backwards. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I think it would be very fun to ride a horse backwards, um, but not so fun. We Actually, it did end up being that reverse cowgirl is uncomfortable because particularly after a certain age, you'd have all sorts of chiropractic issues, constantly looking back over your shoulder to see if they're enjoying it. <laughs> Ow, oh God, oh, and all the bouncing. Well, you, gotta, the, you just put your phone your in selfie, you put your phone in selfie mode. The whole, I'm gonna leave, I think we just have to leave it to the kids to also figure out that it's deeply uncomfortable and not that fun. <laughs> and that's so important. <laughs> Mini like driver, everybody. <laughs> Uproar is out now, and you can download season three of Mini Questions with Mini Driver wherever you get your podcast. That was very Hooray. fun. Thank you.